All right, it's September 26th, 2024, your H2B report. So the cap was met on September 18th. Seasonal Employer Alliance, if you're not a member, you should be if you're an employer. They nailed it. September 18th was the last day that USCIS receded any petitions with an October 1st start date or later. What are we waiting on now? Now we're waiting on a additional allotment of workers, which won't be released before November 1st. It's going to be in that uh, funding bill you might have heard about that, that averted the shutdown of government or said another way that did what it was supposed to do and continue to fund government. Well, that's where this additional allotment of workers is going to be contained. So look for that at the start of November. Hopefully like last year, as soon as it's announced and enters the federal register, those workers will be available. So if you did get capped out, fret not because maybe you can bring in returning workers. Now, if you hear that siren outside, it's because we're in the city. There it goes, it passed. So, the other thing that uh, you know you should know, though, is if you want returning workers, you're not going to be able to get folks who haven't had an H2B in the previous three years. So if you had that specific person in mind, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to get them if you did get capped out. Finally, there will be an allotment of workers from specific countries. We don't know what those specific countries are yet. In 2022, we only had Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Haiti. In 2023, they added to that list also Colombia, Ecuador, and Costa Rica. Will we see other countries added to that? I'm not sure. Uh, one important clarification on USCIS processing. So as some of you know, all H2B applications are now sent to the Texas Service Center. What's interesting though, is that you start getting your receipts from California Service Center or Vermont Service Center if uh, you are either on the West or East Coast, usually. So how's this working? Is the Texas Service Center taking your physical applications because we can't turn them in digitally yet for the H2B program and sh sending them over to California or Vermont? Uh, absolutely not. They're using a system called EL. ELIS, where they're, all they're doing in Texas is making sure that you have everything you need to have an application process. They are then scanning into the system, into the ELIS system, and officers working for the California Service Center, Vermont Service Center, probably remotely, are then checking them out on their computers. So everything that you're turning in is, in is being digitally processed. Texas Service Center clarified that they do not have any intent to process these applications themselves. What does that mean? Well, if you send an application and it's lost for some reason, keep in mind, usually that means it's been rejected, whether it's because it's been sent in after the cap or it's been sent in, you know, with the wrong stuff in it. But in the rare case that it is rejected, you can reach out to the Texas Service Center with the email on their website. So what does this mean? Well, it just means that when you do get your receipt for your application, carefully check to see what service center it's actually coming from because it's not going to be the Texas Service Center. And if you respond to a request for evidence or something, if you're sending it back to Texas, you're making a mistake, it should be going to Vermont or California. The other thing that's been clarified, we had this new set of fees that came in on April 1st, 2024, and there was this big hullabaloo, you know, between different fees having to be paid by large employers and small employers and nonprofits. And for a while there, when we were turning in uh, small employer applications, so employers with less than 25 employees, and uh, sending in the big checks for large employers, because maybe we just didn't have the proof to show that the employer was in fact a small employer, those applications were being rejected. Uh, the USCIS has clarified they're no longer doing this. So if you want to pay them more money when you're a small employer, in order to get everything processed and not have to worry about showing proof of less than 25 employees via some sort of 941 tax filing or a Schedule H or um, something else that showed you were a small employer, you are allowed to pay them more money to process the application. So in other words, the large employer fees are always available to you. Uh, you only have to turn in extra evidence now on your I-129 if and only if uh, you want to take advantage of the small employer fees. Okay, now obviously if you're a large employer, you can't take advantage of the small employer fees. Um, I'm not sure if the same holds for nonprofits. Uh, maybe the nonprofit can pay the large fee, but that has not actually been specifically clarified yet. So nonprofits, I think, still have to show proof of their nonprofit status if they make that election. So that is the H2B update right now. You should know, I'm taking clients through November 10. November 10. November 10. 10. I don't know which way looks good on the camera. I'm, not a, I'm just a small time lawyer. I'm not a genius. You know? So uh, November 10th, I'm taking clients. You can call this number 919-827-0918. Set up a free consult. You can email at dd at frontiertech.com. That's dd at frontiertech.com. All information should be up here somewhere on screen. Nicely laid out by Keith. Thank you, Keith. 
And again, uh, we are taking on clients through November 10th, so give us a call. But if you can give us a call well before then, that would be great. The reason November 10th is the deadline. It takes about 42 days to get a prevailing wage. So if we file your wage by November 15th, which is still kind of the outer limit, I feel like we can get you in on time. I would prefer it if you set up something before then. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I hope these are helpful, and I'll talk to you soon.